pledge to oppose and speak out against all forms of violence, particularly rape, child sexual abuse, child marriages, child labor, and trafficking. I pledge that wherever I come to know about such abuses, I will inform the concerned persons and authorities. I pledge that I will make India a safe India. Thank you so much. As you know that my war on rape, sexual abuse and terrorism has begun from Kanyakumari on 11th of September. This is a not, not an ordinary campaign. Why I say that this is a war? Because this hidden moral epidemic has grown multifold. It's growing everywhere in the country. And it's not an ordinary crime. When the victims, their parents, and ordinary citizens live in fear, and the predators, abusers, rapists, roam around freely and frankly and fearlessly, then a war was needed. Every day, in every newspaper, in every news channel, we see abuse of another child. And that is something which has to be challenged and changed. Our homes are not safe. But our boys and girls do not speak out, they do not tell their parents because of the social taboo, because of shame, because of fear, sometimes because of family honor and dignity. And that breeds more fear, more crime. So Bharat Yatra is a march from fear to fearlessness. It is a march from silence to sound. It is a march from darkness to light. Where the darkness of sexual abuse is dispelled and the light of freedom, the light of fearlessness, the light of constitutional rights and legal rights begin. Our homes are not safe because sometimes close friends and family members abuse our children. And that is not only the case of girls but also boys. That is not only the cases of poor people or any particular reason or in a particular caste or particular community that goes across. It can happen with anyone, anytime. All parents are in fear. Schools are not safe. Every other day we hear that how a watchman, a bus driver, a teacher, a gardener in the school became monster, predator. I refuse to accept this situation to continue. Many people thought that after winning the world's highest moral prize, highest prize, Nobel Prize, one can sit ideal, one can sit and talk as celebrity, as a preacher, but no. This march is a call from innocence.
this is call for from silence this is call for fear because my children are being raped and i am going to say it that i am not going to allow it to continue i am going to tell to all those abusers that i stop you now i will do whatever i can do i am knocking every door without any hesitation without any shame without any reason. i am knocking every door very ordinary people to non people to faith leaders to politicians bureaucrats corporate leaders artists everywhere i am going because my country is in danger if one single child is in danger india is in danger if our schools are not safe then india is not safe and that is the reason today i am making an appeal i am making an appeal to the entire political community i am making an appeal to every single parliament member of all parties i am making this earnest appeal to all mlas in all states and all elected representatives for what they should listen they should feel the pulse of parents and the parents are frightened with the schools our children are getting more and more frightened with the schools and this worry is growing this concern has changed into a frightening environment after this incident of killing of 7 year old boy in gurgaon so my appeal to all these politicians and representatives of people please visit your school where you study it and your children a child go to school in your constituency unannounced as ordinary citizen as ordinary parent feel like a parent and go to school and see whether those schools are safe or not for your children because they are all your children don't go as celebrated vips or guests of honors once please visit a school as ordinary parent and that is my call to all political community today in chennai because this is a place i know in the history this is the this is the place of long struggle against discrimination and injustices this is the place which had given us and taught us the value the virtue of compassion i was when i was a child and i read about the great saint thiruvalluvar so many things he has written and said centuries ago but one thing closest and deepest in my heart is that when he says that compassion is the most powerful virtue which can change the society so i am calling everyone to connect through compassion because compassion is not just a connect of feeling for the suffering but it's a feeling for suffering of anyone known or unknown and a quest a thirst a drive to change that suffering and that is compassion which centuries ago the great saint of this land has taught us this is the land of peria who had fought against discrimination and that's why i am making this appeal to the entire nation please consider that these children are your children it can happen with your children whatever big politicians you are go to school as you know that this is the second leg of bharat yatra the first leg began from 
Kanyakumari and that is on the way to Madurai and it will go to Bangalore and this leg which started of today will joining with the main yatra in Bangalore. I will be on road to Bangalore and then the two yatras which are merged with the main yatra will go up to Hyderabad and then we will go to Central India via Nagpur and Mumbai. Another yatra will begin from Kashmir and in Kashmir apart from our fight against sexual abuse and trafficking we are going to focus more on the issue of use of children for violence. The violent extremists are using children as shields as you know, as stone pelters as you know, as weapons as we all know that is not acceptable. Please spare your children, my children. Don't use them as weapons and shields. Don't use them for violence. Let them grow. We will also be passing through other areas. Some local issues would be raised. But the common and the overarching slogan of the Bharat Yatra is Surakshit Bachpan, Surakshit Bharat. So, safe childhood, safe India. India is not safe if our childhood is not safe. We cannot think, we cannot imagine a world without children. If we cannot imagine a world without children, how can we imagine a world without childhood? So, we are marching. I would also be asking the government to ensure the fastest disposal of cases pending under POXO. As you know that POXO is a very strong law, very good law. But the state of enforcement is very pathetic. 15,000 cases were registered last year. Only 4% convictions, 6% acquittal, 90% pendency. And this is not just this year, but last year the pendency was, year before last the pendency was 96%. So if not a single crime of sexual abuse occur from now onwards in a in some states, it will take 40 years to dispose of those cases. What a mockery, what a mockery on these children. Whether these children will be attending these hearings and attending courts <coughs> along with their children or grandchildren at the age of 54, 55, 56, after 40 years, that I do not accept. I am not here just to speak for myself. I am not here to promote myself. I am not here for any kind of reason for any advertisement. I am here to call you to be the partner, to be the marcher. Your words matter. If you write something, it will bring light in the lives of children as journalists. I tell you that I was an engineer, but after giving up, giving up my job, I decided to start a magazine in English and Hindi, basically in Hindi in India, in, uh, in New Delhi. And my purpose was to become the voice of all, voice of all those voiceless children through writing in my magazine called Struggle Shall Continue. So I know the power of words. So, uh, and the power of social media, the power of television is much more stronger. So please join us in this war on rape. Save our children, save India. This is, uh, as I said, the growing epidemic all across India. 
unfortunately we nobody has the exact figure because we can tell something on the basis of the reported cases under ncrv data the national crime record bureau data that changes uh, from state to state but we should have more clear knowledge about it which we don't have the reported cases as i said are minimal 10 years ago there was a report released by government of india unicef and some ngos and it was quite revealing that 53% of india's children before attaining the age of 18 are sexually abused so two out of one child is sexually abused sometimes the child knows it sometimes does not know most children do not know about the bad touch they feel un uncomfortable if their relatives or their uncles, so-called uncles or neighbors, touch them and they feel uncomfortable but they don't know that it is a sexual abuse, but it is happening. So my sense is that it is growing because of several reasons. And one reason is fearlessness among the perpetrators and the fear in the society and social taboo. I, I strongly demand an age appropriate and cultural culture appropriate sex education in schools it is not just good touch and bad touch which is uh, now uh, existing in some schools definitely but not in the remote areas not in the government schools so it should be the part of curricula or schools should be the safest heaven for children and uh, that requires a lot of effort. So I'm not talking about the legal um, efforts. Today, I made this call, this appeal to the politicians. If they go themselves, then they will feel whether the schools are safe or not. So that will send a strong message to the school authorities on one hand. It will help in restoring confidence among children and parents who are frightened now. Day by day, these things are happening. and. It creates a lot of uh, fear. So uh, who else will do if not the elect elected representatives who have power and they can change and they must change. I met Prime Minister several times and I met before Yatra also and he had strongly supported Yatra. He has sent a written uh, a letter of uh, support which was read out uh, in Kanyakumari. But I am also in very regular contact with the Minister of uh, uh, this uh, Human Resource Development and brought all these ideas, including one simple uh, principle in education that now we have right to education. But how we are going to promote rights through education and rights in education system? So right of protection inside the school should be the part of the entire education system but rights to education will help children to be empowered and protect themselves paul bhaskar and uh, abdul ghani are the organizers here in tamil nadu and the entire uh, south uh, south indian region so they come from ngos uh, the civil society community but my brothers and friends for many many years so this time, actually, let me tell you one thing, uh, that this is the first time in the human history, in the history of any nation anywhere in the world, that such a huge social movement has been launched against this uh, evil and crime of sexual abuse. And that is not the problem. Singular India cannot be singled out for that. It's a, it's a global scenario. And also in the so-called industrialized and developed countries, we come across the similar things. But we are, since I had organized several launches, several marches in the past and they were successful, in Indian context, the most successful was the Siksha Yatra or education march which had demanded Amendment in the Constitution in 2001 that also began from Kanyakumari and reached up to De Delhi via Kashmir. 
with this singular demand that education should become the fundamental right in our constitution, people were making mockery of me. That time, uh, I was not a known person, even in my neighborhood in, in, in Delhi. Sometimes when I was attacked and hospitalized, and sometimes media and news, newspaper friends uh, reported it. But uh, that time, people were laughing that, how can you think of changing India's constitution? But it was the power of civil society, NGOs, ordinary people, youth, children, when they demanded that they want education as right, and we succeeded within five months. Within five months, the constitutional amendment was made. And then there was another big march, global march, against child labor that went across 103 countries in 1998. And the core demand was an international law. You will surprise to know, many of you might be knowing, that there was no international law against child slavery and child trafficking, child prostitution until 1999. So in 1998, we organized the global march against child labor from three corners of the world. Paul was the national coordinator at that time in India. And that was my crazy idea and people were again laughing at me, but I again believed in the power of common people and the youth. And today, uh, and, and we succeeded. When we reached in Geneva, all the international community were in shame when the children themselves spoke that we don't want tools and weapons in our tiny hands, we want books and we want toys. Many of the politicians, the world leaders were in tears because that was very strong moral ch challenge came from the victims themselves. And within a year, an international law has been constituted. Law has been enacted that is called the Convention on Worst Forms of Child Labor. So that was concrete result. Here I'm also demanding a new law, strong law against trafficking, because eight children go missing every hour in India and they are essentially trafficked. When you close your eyes and open in, that, in this small time, one child is trafficked. So that is a serious problem. We have to change it. So now, this Yatra, uh, the Bharat Yatra, uh, is not the first time, but this is a time-tested uh, strategy. And, uh, the good news is that right from the President of India, the Vice President, the Prime Minister, several ministers, uh, most of the chief ministers of different states, chief justices of the high courts, and several senior judges from the Supreme Court have supported and joining Yatra in some places, they promised, and it started. But another uniqueness of this Yatra is that the first time for any uh, cause of children, the religious leaders, the faith leaders are joining hands together. We organized the three round tables inviting all major faith leaders or their representatives in Delhi, then in Hyderabad, and then one in Ajmer Sharif. And that has resulted in a strong support from them. <coughs> so, in last three days, right from Kanyakumari, Faith leaders from all faiths came together and sat on the dais and we are involving them everywhere. And I dream an India where any disparate child of any religion or any community can enter, if in desperation, if in danger, can enter to any religious place which is the nearest to him or her. When a Muslim child can easily enter into a temple trusting the pujari, trusting the priest and the priest says that, oh my child, come here. This is the safest place because this place of God. And so should happen with the Hindu child to enter into a church or a mosque. So I am challenging them, I am asking them to make India such India. That is very, very alarming, very, very concerning for me. And that's why today in Chennai, I am making an earnest appeal to all politicians.
to all parliament members cutting across party line, to all MLAs in all states and local representatives. Please visit your school. Visit your school where you studied in your childhood or any school convenient to you without making an announcement. Don't go there as celebrated VIP or guest. Go as a parent. Go as a father. Go as a mother. And see whether the school is safe for children or not. If it is not safe, then change. And if you keep on going to visit your schools, then it will help in restoring the faith in schools, the confidence in institutions that should not be lost. Otherwise, it would be a much bigger loss. Our children have to be in school. Every single child has to be in school. And every child should be safe in school. And the initiative should be taken by all politicians who are elected representatives. In and out cinema. 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 Subscribe Panaga. Subscribe Panaga. Subscribe Panaga. Subscribe Panaga. And you find the channel and subscribe Panaga. In and out cinema. Subscribe Panaga. Put it a share. Put up Panaga.